We have time, we have time. So this is the last, this is the last talk of the day, which means I can go over time as long as I want. <laughs> Until they turn off the lights, right? Uh, yeah, you can just, you can just also leave at six. Yeah, it's fine. But this is scheduled just to be 30 minutes. It should be all right. So, but first to get the audience engaged a little bit, how many of you here use OBS? Yeah, and how many of you use Git regularly? So there's no controversy, it's all good now, yeah? It's, it's go time, yeah? So I'm, I'm Adam, and Adrian is not here, but he's in, in the spirit of things, right? Sense his regards. So let's start with the agenda, that's always customary. And we always want to define the five W's, right? So what is happening? Like, what is affected here? What are we talking about? Where is the source control management, right? What happened to it? Who is to blame for this? When is it going to be happening, right? Because you want to delay things maybe five, 10 years, and then it's like, okay, you're retired, so you don't have to worry. Um, and why are we making you learn new things, right? Why? That's another thing to answer. Uh, after this, we'll just have a quick uh, example of what hypothetical workflow would look like. And my favorite part would be the security improvements over OBS. This is actually what, uh, why I'm interested in this. So let's define a few things. So what are we even talking about? So when we talk about OBS, what is, what is this OBS? And OBS is kind of this, this monolith that grew over time. And it's the source control man management for the packages and for the projects. And it's also the build machinery for the images and the RPMs and everything else that you want. It's the storage backend, I guess, there is there. It verifies integrity, there's, there's, it signs things. There's approvals. So everything is, is OBS, right? Everything is OBS. It's, and that's not ideal, right? And uh, there's, there's always somebody coming in and saying, oh, OBS can do this. Uh, let's, let's add a feature. Yeah? Attack on another feature to the ball. And it will be OK. And if there's a problem, we'll ask Adrian. Adrian will make it good again. And then it will continue, right? So next, we, what, is, what is Git? Git is just a source control management software, right? Uh, I guess the best way to look at it is the multi-version file system. You, you pull something, you have all the versions. Then you can check out all the versions. You have all the history. So it's not a build machinery. It's not a particularly good storage engine for anything. There's, there's integrity, but there's no approval. It's just, it's just designed to be an ACM, I guess. Um, and they also mentioned Go. Uh, what is Go? It's, it's, it's Go time, right? Uh, um, but no, no, it's, it's, uh, it corresponds to Gitty. So we've looked in the Git work, work group about uh, various tools we could use. So we looked at things like Pagur for building packages, but the upstream is not there. It's basically maintenance mode software now. We looked at things like GitLab, but SUSE it would be very small in this. We don't have influence uh, in, uh, in upstream for GitLab. Um, but Gitty is a project that has significant upstream, but is not particularly big. So we can actually influence upstream. There's advantages here. Um, and Gitty is written in Go, so there's the Go. Um, so where is it going? It's already actually deployed. Um, if you go to source.opensuda.org, that's the, for the open build service, and there's a corresponding one for, for IBS. Um, who's to blame? Uh, I will not name names here, but there's a Slack channel. You can find out who's responsible. And also, oh, there's a typo. Uh, OpenSUSE build service in, in Libera IRC, if you want to find Adrian. Um, when will we get there? Um, 
slow and steady wins the race is the, is the uh, motto here, because we've been going slowly. Um, so it was, it was for Leo and Alp, and now it's framework one. I mean, it's, it's the same thing, I guess. But it's, it's progressing, it's progressing. And why are we making you learn new things? Um, why is there even a need for this in the first place? So because OBS is 100% internal project, I uh, already mentioned this, yeah, we have 100% internal effort. We are not leveraging anything, any external contributions in this. So you can say n no one uses it, and I put in quotes because there's external, there's outside uh, in, uh, deployments of OBS, but it's basically just SUSE that is using OBS. You, there's, there's no external contributions to this. So everybody's using GitHub, and they have workflows in, Git, in GitHub. Even when, now it's synonymous when you say, uh, I'm doing stuff in Git. They're actually men, they're doing stuff in GitHub, not Git. Yeah, the workflows are in GitHub. Um, so we, we need something similar to be able to leverage this, this, uh, uh, this knowledge. If people come in, they don't want to necessarily learn new things or even contributors to OpenSUSE. Um, funny thing is that, oh, my timers. Uh -huh. Funny thing is that, for example, in, if, you, if you go to, to build.opensuit.org, you will see that it's uh, accessible, right, often. But if you go to source.opensuit.org, sometimes there's somebody running some script making uh, 10,000 accounts, right, or doing some kind of a, uh, API calls, doing crazy things. They're not doing this in build, and open source, I don't know, because it's kind of esoteric, so they didn't even bother to learn this, but the source of open source, the door, because it's, it's like deployed here, there, there, whatever, so they can already use. So this, this is, it's, it's popular, right? You can say it's, it's more popular than, than OBS, right? even at this stage. Um, so what is actually happening? Um, what is happening is we are not going to be replacing OBS. The, the build service, the image deployment, all that stuff is staying in the OBS. What, is, what we want to move is the sources, so the packages, the sources for the packages, and all the workflows. So submit, requests, the reviews, those are moving out of the OBS. That's the, that's the end goal of here. Um, you may say that, well, right now we have Git in OBS because you have the service that, call, that you can take a snapshot of our Git and then put it into OBS, but that's just a tarball in another way, right? So this is not, this is not uh, uh, Git. So the SCM should be moving to, to, to a different, uh, to different tool, which is Gitty. And how does Gitty look? Um, it looks like GitHub, and the project like Node, like Node.js, it just looks the same like uh, on OBS. It's just files. We're not changing anything here. Um, it's the same with patches. You just you just build it, yeah. But the one interesting thing is that if you open the branches, in the branches you will see that there is a factory and then there's a devil and maybe other things. And uh, the purpose of these branches is to reflect the state of the project that this branch represents. So for example, factory would be represented by the factory branch. The devil project or some, something else would be represented by some branch that is named in it, like micro, <laughs> SUSE Linux micro, yeah? So you can have a, a branch representing this. And from a packager point of view, what we want to do is that this state, it represents, it represents the state of the package in a given project. So if you want to do an update for a, a package in a project, you, you fork this uh, repository, you do your changes, and you do a pull request. Right? So it's the same like in, in GitHub. Fork, do changes, pull request to your, to your target uh, branch. Right? 
And then OBS builds this with, uh, there's an SCM sync mechanic, I will explain this later. And from a, for, a packet, for, a, for a project, it looks about the same. Um, slight difference is that projects contain packages and this we've done with a sub-module. So for example, the SUSE ALP standard uh, project, version one, which is the branch here, would have a few thousands and thousands of sub-modules, which are basically <laughs> just like pointers that point to a, to a commit in a, in a package, right? And if you want to update this project, you, you clone it, you change the sub-module that you want, so it points to a different uh, version of this package, and you do a pull request, so it's the same. And then Git has a, also the other, basically it's SCM sync, does the same thing, it takes and builds this uh, project uh, directly. There's also a, a pbuild command that does this locally, so it works in OBS and out of the OBS. And I've made a terrible diagram that you can suffer through, but this is, this is how you update the package, right? You, you fork it, you do your changes, do, you do a pull request, right? But it doesn't actually work like that exactly, because behind the scenes, what, what should happen is when you do a pull request to factory, it should automatically update the module, the, the sub-module, in the factory project, right? So it should fork the factory project, do the update of the sub-module. Uh, sub Maybe there's some associated uh, config file changes uh, for this. It builds this, integrates this, and only after the factory merges the, the, the new changes, the branch is updated in the, in the, in the original uh, uh, package, in the repository, right? And this is the, how you implement Git in OBS. So there's a documentation on the bottom here. And, uh, and if you want to add a re reference to a, to a uh, project, you just do this SCM sync XML and reference the URL of the, of the, of the project with the sub-modules. If you want to do just uh, package in an OBS project. So you don't want to do the project in the, in the Git, but you just want to do the package in the Git. You, you do the same thing in a package meta. Right? And this just pulls, then it just pulls the sources from the Git instead of putting the, pulling the sources from the SCM in OBS. And if you remove it, it then pulls it back from, from tries to pull it from the uh, SCM in, in OBS. So this is probably the most important slide for reference later if you want to experiment. Um, you may say, well, Adam, there's, there's a problem. Git is bad at big files and all the, everything is big files in, in what we do. Yes, and we know this. So all the big files like tarball should be in, in, in LFS. That's the solution we're working with for right now. Um, and this next part is actually what is why I'm involved here, what makes me interested in this project. Um, OBS is not really a zero trust software. Um, it relies on the system to be secure. If somebody can infiltrate the system, start changing things around, it would be a little bit of a nuisance to fix this problem, even to verify. Um, so the binaries are signed, Things like the, 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 the images are signed, RPMs are signed, so that's fine. But what happened to the sources? What happens to the approvals, right? Approval is just, okay, you, go to, you log into OPS, you click approve and it's done. Or some bot in some account says, okay, that's good. And this is just stored in some, in some database and okay. Good, but the, what, if somebody comes in and, or something and, and starts messing around with it, how do you know what is the state before, right? And can Git maybe help with this, right? And I thought about this a little bit and um, 
Git commits can be signed, right? Git commits can be signed. And when you sign them, you, with a GPG key, this GPG system is distributed. So for example, Debian signs all the, all, everything that is uploaded is signed by, by the developers in the keyring, and it's uploaded via just FTP. So they don't even care about any secure channel, it's just FTP. Right? Because all the sources are then, can, you can then verify them later. You, they, you can't just break into some uh, uh, storage and then modify it and say, like, oh, well, how do I know that this is, this is change or not, right? So with GPGs, I think GPG signatures, we can, we can achieve this uh, zero trust. Um, so if somebody doesn't know how this actually looks, um, a pack, if you submit a package, like a pull request to, let's say, SL19 <coughs> project um, in Git, and it's signed, what, is actually, what does this actually mean? So there's a, the red part is not signed. This is just a hash of your commit message to, with everything. But the blue part is the signature yeah, with the header, and the black part is the stuff that is signed. So you can separate the two. And then you can just use GPG verify, like on a detached signature, and it will verify if you have the key for the keyring. Um, but if you know that, that this is actually just, uh, Git is just hash functions all the way down. So here you have a reference to a tree object and a parent commit, and this is a hash function, right? This is just a hash function. So what you're signing is a hash. So uh, GPG signature is normally another hash, a uh, stronger hash, like say five, SHA-512 or something, and this is then signed with, uh, with the asymmetric key. But what you're signing here is just a SHA-1 hash, right? So what you're signing is a SHA-1, not you're, you're limited in the, in, the, in the security here. And in 2030, which is before even end of life of, of, of GA for SLE 15, NIST already announced that SHA-1 should not be used and should be phased out. They don't even recommend it using it now. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of a problem because Git is all by default SHA-1. There's added support for SHA-256, but if you try to use it anywhere outside of the Git tools, you will have problems. So I tried to use it, for example, on GitLab, and I locked myself out because the, the user interface just returned 500. I record 500 when it tried to even look at the thing that it uh, imported from external. Um, after half a year, they fixed it, so now it's just an empty uh, repository, and I can delete it. It's, it's <laughs> better now. <laughs> um, for Gitty, I... When it, it just produced nothing, but uh, yeah, I fixed this now. Um, so I had to touch some 100 plus files to abstract this hash function. There was a huge, re, uh, basically just, 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 uh, just to put everything in one place because it was hard coded everywhere, right? Um, and then touching two files later and now Gitty that we have deployed in upstream, it was accepted upstream now, has SHA-256 support for Git. So that, that now works. Um, I did not try to import this into GitHub. I don't want to be locked out from there. <laughs> um, one issue with SHA-256 in Git is that there is no interoper interoperability with SHA-1 repositories at all. Um, this is planned and patches are welcome Upstream will accept them, and whoever planned this and wanted to work on it, um, they disappeared two, three, four years ago, I forget, some time ago. So the, the implementation for SHA-256 is ready and it's, it's stable, but the interop, the, this translation tables that they want to add between SHA-1 and SHA-256 is, is not there. And this is a problem because um, we, if, we, if we want to go this way to using GPG signatures for verification and we adopt SHA-256, then we cannot, these, these, these uh, repositories cannot import SHA-1 
repositories uh, or reference them. So we are kind of back to uh, OBS when it comes to patching. We have to copy the patch, you can't just cherry pick it, right? But patches are welcome and hopefully everybody here is now motivated to, to help uh, in this effort. Um, and furthermore, we can use signatures as a way of, of approvals, yeah. as a way of approval here. Um, so normally, when you sign a commit, you sign the commit and the, the committer is, header is updated with a timestamp, et cetera, but, but you can just sign a commit, yeah? But GPG allows you to have multiple signatures in a GPG signature data blob, yeah? They, they are just concatenated. So if you do a, for example, in, in previously when I showed you, you do a pull request and you need to have a approval from a project manager or a release manager or the auto build team or some bots on the way that it builds or maintenance bot, they can take this uh, commit, add their signature to this, create a new commit that now has two signatures or three signatures and it's all validated. And this can replace the approvals that we have in OBS. Because all these commits now exist in the source and all the commits that are would be referenced in, referenced in a project with the, the sub-module pointers would always point to the commits that were approved by all these signatures. Right? And the, the, the requirements can be per project set up. So this is not something that is, that is global. So let's see, factory could require two or three bots to sign and, and <coughs> one maintainer and SLI could require five people to sign this. Um, so you, there's the commit message and what I'm talking about is you have different key rings in your project and the signature will then uh, have keys that are in particular key rings. And you can verify this with GPG verify. If a key is missing, it says missing. If it's correct, it says correct. If it fails, then you know there's a problem. So, and I even have a demo. Um, let's see. My demo is of this SCM sync. I move this here. Okay. So there's a very simple package I made. The package has a hello C program which, com which just compiles. There's a spec file that just compiles it, nothing else. And this is the OBS version that builds this. So there's uh, on the bottom, there's a uh, info. I can use this. Oh, yeah. So there's, a, there's an info of the, this is actually Shutter 56. So it, it pulls it from, from Gitty. And you can see these files here. That's for the package. And the important thing is, my, when I created this package, all I had to do was this add this SCM sync to the sources in, in Gitty, nothing else. <coughs> and then I also created a project that references this other repository via a sub-module, there's, there's a foo, uh, a very classic name. Config is empty, I just created for nothing, but it's, it's just there, so it's, the repository was not empty at the beginning. Um, you can also see that these hashes, maybe you can see, can you see? No, maybe you can see. These hashes are 256, so this is Gitty with SHA-256. It's not empty. But the sub-module is here, and it just references the other project, I mean, the, res the other repository, and Here's the project in OBS. OBS doesn't list the packages. This is what, how ALP also looks. 
But uh, if you go to monitor, <coughs> you see the package is here, and it's built. And when you click on the package, there's uh, limitations on the front end that it doesn't list the STM sync. Yes, we know. But here, the meta, meta for this project is right there. So you have your repository that it's building against and the SCM sync for the project. Right? It pulls everything there, recursively re resolves the submodules, and then builds them. So the setup for the project is very similar except SCM sync. That's the, that's the demo. Very excited. Um, what else do I have here? Yep. Oh, wrong focus. Ah, to do. Ah. To do. We need some tooling to make this easier. So, for example, staging in OBS is to move this to, to, to Git workflow requires somebody to do the tooling to make the setup and uh, handling of this of, of uh, submodules in Git, ideally that would be better done with better tooling because handling submodules manually is a little bit cumbersome, uh, especially for projects the size of, of Alp, no, Framework 1, which have quite, quite a lot of modules to update. Um, so uh, w once you get a hang of it, it's easy, but at the beginning it's a little bit overwhelming. And feedback and ideas about how, how to improve the workflow. So I presented a workflow that is ideally not yet implemented, like it's not yet implemented, but ideally would be implemented, but maybe you have a better idea how to have a better workflow. And I think that's everything, yes, thank you. So if you have questions or feedback, it's always welcome. Now or later, I'm, I'm available. Uh, yeah, so uh, my question is, um, so Kitty was recently, there was a hard fork with uh, Forcho, so uh, on which one are we going to the, the, uh, work on? It, it's, we will stay on the original. Okay, just because asking. Because it's, it's, the, the fork was done, by, like, I, it was, in, in my opinion, it's just political reason, right? Because... Uh, the fork was done, uh, the way I understand it was that be because the original authors or author wanted to change something for, to, to try to uh, make their in, in time investment into some, some kind of a commercial enterprise or something. But the license of, of Gitty has not changed. Nothing has changed except for, for some perspective of some people versus another. Why I'm asking is because the Virtual fork, um, they um, plan to do um, decentral um, federated uh, pull requests. So this would be, of course, nice if people could, without even having an account, uh, make uh, pull requests. So yeah, that might uh, lower the burden, uh, lower the entry level of people yeah, contributing. Um, yeah, federated pull requests, it's... Uh I don't quite understand what that means. But, but basically what we have, why we even have source.opensuda.org versus source.susa.de, and why not, why OBS will not pull from GitHub, for example, is because we have to have these servers under our control because these are, these are the truths, right? So for, it has to, it has to be, remain under our control for, for the commons criteria reasons and stuff like this. Just a comment on federated pull requests. It's very nice fairy tale. I have followed the, <laughs> this idea for like last 10 years and I have never seen the thing alive. So um, I will believe it when I see it really. Uh, and certainly it's not a reason to switch uh, from one project to another in my opinion. Uh, I am actually clandestinely maintaining a couple of factory packages, tiny ones in uh, Git. 
uh, using this CM sync. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is still kind of illegal because um, it doesn't generate proper tarballs in uh, uh, SRC RPM. Is this somehow fixed or? Uh, I would have to defer to Adrian for that because I have no idea about about this stuff. Uh, if you use this uh, system, you don't get a proper SRC RPM. So, uh, which is kind of problem. Uh, yes, but we don't have uh, source RPMs for containers, and as long as the sources are available. So, if you have a if you have a reference somewhere, maybe that's good enough. I don't know. And if it's if it's a if it's a problem, it have a, if it has to be fixed. I guess it will have to be fixed uh, some way. Uh, what I wanted to say is that I I understand that the tooling is uh, really important, but um, I think it would be best if we could make get it to the uh, situation where it actually can be used. And be, uh, when people will start to use it, they uh, they will help with tooling. But uh, this is we are still waiting. Uh, on the like, state where it could be actually used for maintaining factory packages. Um, yes, 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 and there's a reason for this. So at the beginning in the work group, there was a lot of um, enthusiasm. And then since everything is basically done on a voluntary level, uh, people lost enthusiasm as the value of despair got closer and then they disappeared and yeah so maybe we can get some enthusiasm back a little bit and then that would help with the with the tooling because if you if we just have one or two people working on tooling and it's, it gets very slow Uh, I have a couple of questions. So the first question would be, um, currently if I use this workflow, it's not readily implemented, right? If I do a pull yeah. request, it works. It does not work that it syncs yeah. back to OBS, right? Yeah, it does, that's, that does, doesn't work. No, okay, doesn't work. Um, uh, so um, uh, who would I talk to, to like? You could help implement it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, um, uh, because do you this have like a list of features that you want to impl have implemented? Uh, like work yes, ah, it that's, was that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's so the features, have, yes. Like, um, because factory is not in Git. Yeah. So, so this is not following this workflow. Okay, so if I all. have like any feature requests or something like that, I need to implement it myself. Oh. That's the point, yes. So even in Git, if you want to have interop with SHA-1 repositories, you would have to now re implement it yourself. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so it, it's, kind of, it's kind of a little bit funny because OBS is looked on like this uh, old software, old SCM uh, subversion style, and then we want to do something new, and then we end up at this bleeding edge where stuff is broken on the other side, right? So excitement, yeah? Yeah, cool. Um, so there's like a working group. I will just talk to you. As yes, well. yes, in the Slack channel. Just search for Git, and you'll find the work group with a long name. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, do we need uh, Git here? Can we use email instead? <laughs> <laughs> also, if if not, can we authenticate against the the web? interface with uh, GPG? <sighs> That's a loaded question. So if you want to have email interface with this workflow, I'm sure it's possible if you do the tooling for it. Uh, well, my question <laughs> was like, does anyone want to implement that so that I don't have to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always possible. We could, I don't know, do whatever, but Will someone else do it? Yeah. I, I didn't. I did. I didn't hear uh, uh, anybody else wanting this. So, if somebody else wants it, then maybe they they will be also implementing this. And the the other thing is, um, right now it could could be done manually, but some projects are very proactive in in letting you know that they have new releases. And they sometimes provide you with a patch, so you can just apply that. Uh, we could have something to monitor this. 
so they don't have to actually open a pull request. You mean like a, like a bot that does a pull request yeah. for you? Yeah. Just Why an idea. I mean, you can implement whatever tooling you like, and then that, as long as it does this, it works, right? No, but I mean a standard thing. Like if, if we tell projects, you want to get update, updates fast, provide us with uh, a project on your side, and we, we monitor that. And we apply it when on our arm, but... It's, it's kind of like OB, uh, Factory has a bot that does an auto-update right now, if that's what you mean. Uh, slightly better than that, in that we could offload all the work to the other side. Okay, yeah, we should still verify, but to some extent, yeah. I mean, someone has to check anyway because people could lose their account or become evil or whatever. Actually, concerning emails, I think the sending emails to maintainers should work. Only the commit would be uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sent there by the packager to the repository, but uh, it should work. Well, not. I'm not sure if it's automatic. I, I mean, in the future, uh, if, there are those scripts, uh, Greg, uh, which Greg Hartman uses for. Uh, yeah. So the kernel uses assigned uh, commits. I, I'm not kernel maintainer. The, there is half of this uh, hall is full of uh, kernel maintainers, so you, you should know the workflow better than me, but it should be possible. Well, in the workflow I presented briefly, if the commits are s signed, then it should work, right? But, but, but it's, it's not like that. I mean, no, it, it doesn't work because the, the commit is a patch, right? It's not something that is that is then signed. You need to sign the, the git commit, which has a parent on it. I think we should discuss it on the yeah. slide. Yeah, it can be discussed and later. Hello. Hello. Um, I don't, this is still in progress, but it looks a bit clumsy. Like a new tool, the, the SM sync integration. Wouldn't it be easier if OBS internal storage was git? like OBS, inside OBS, without Giti, without another tool that needs to sync. Because there's so, internal storage, so replace that storage with Git. So I am not an OBS developer, so I can't say what Adrian would say for this. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is I have version 2.0, but there was 1.85 before. Yeah. So, um, the thing is that we're using from Gitty, we're using OBS as the LFS storage right now. So the storage for large objects is the OBS, right? So, Git is not good at everything. Mm. It we, we can't just we can't just replace we can't put back uh, storage of of OBS w uh, with Git because OBS is storing images it's storing RPMs and big object stuff that we need anyway. Yes, it, at, least, at, at least for me, uh, using OBS it doesn't look too different from from Git like. The interface, it's pretty similar. The OSC command, it's pretty it similar. It should be. So if it, it was be Git similar. behind it, that would be like, great. Yeah, but Git is very bad at, at storage, right? It's, it, when you clone a Git repository, you get all the, all the artifacts. OK, so, mm -hmm. and, and so since, OK, that, then switching to now, now that you're using Git, Instead of, of having the tarball like in with the package, wouldn't it be easier if you had like just a mirror from the official version, like another repository 
instead of ha having to pack a tarball everywhere, you could just have a, a mirror from Node.js, as you showed, instead of a tarball. Yeah, so. but we're, we're mostly using just releases. Like, this is the release, and this is what, how the package is built from a spec file. This, it's still using a spec yeah. file to build it. It's not something else. Yeah, to that. Not everyone is tagging properly and doing releases properly upstream, so. Yeah, sometimes the tarball of the release is different from the. Group. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, I, I know, because I maintain some packages and there's differences between the tarball <laughs> and, and the tag, and I find that bizarre, but yeah, <coughs> that's a good point, okay. There have been an approach that uh, OBS will store, uh, store small files and uh, in Git, and uh, large files will be in separate storage, and the Git will store only the hash for for searching the uh, the tarball. Yeah, exactly. That's the LFS. That's the LFS. The LFS stores the hash, and then you ask the LFS. Uh, a system to get the tarball that matches the hash. So uh, my, my second question is, um, so um, you showed that there's the devil branch and there's the factory branch. Yeah. So essentially the devil branch is like, yeah, the, that what we currently have in the devil project. The problem is um, how do, so how have you imagined the workflow uh, submitting to factory. Should it be similar to now that we submit first the devil project and then only from the devil project to factory? And I'm not sure if Kitty um, actually would allow this within the current permission model. Well, then we can uh, adjust the permission model or expand it or whatever. Uh, but this has also been a discussion in the work group how to do the pull request, do, you, do, we, do we care about devil projects in the first place? And uh, some care about devil projects, like devil projects are still important and you want to be able to do a pull request to the devil project, maintainer approves it and then takes a pull request from devil project to factory, for example, just like it is now. So the workflow, like it is now, I think it makes sense to me. But it could be changed, I mean, there's, this is not, Hard coded anywhere. Hi. Um, what's the future for GitLab dot is going Kitty is going to replace it? They are, are they going to coexist? I, I think that's independent. I don't I don't think this has anything to do with the uh, GitLab. So so I think it will it will stay for as long as it's used. So kind of dovetailing to that question, but in a more broad sense. There are a bunch of packages that have source services that pull from other Git repositories. How does that work in this setup? Do you use submodules, or is it not implemented, or is it so sort of left as an exercise for the reader? Left as an exercise to the reader, yes. But uh, on the weekend, I reached the depth of despair trough myself when I was trying to see if I can have a SHA-1 repository uh, as a, as a sub-module in a SHA-256 uh, repository. It doesn't work. You need to have the same object format. So with the SCM as it is now in OBS, um, what it does, it just takes a snapshot of the upstream Git. So it doesn't really give you Inter, like doesn't connect the git to the to the OBS. It just get, takes a makes a makes a makes a tarball or or a OBS CP, the CPIO and puts it into into the the OBS. So without with the lack of in, interrupt between SHA one and SHA two fifty six in Git tools, that probably remains for now. So it would still be an external tool. I mean, for any projects yeah. that I have that. That use source services in that way. It's always build mode manual or build exactly, mode, exactly. So, it's, so it'd still be a local tool. Exactly. But it would be slick if it could be sub modules. Uh, it's not. Yes, it would be nice if it would be sub modules. That would be that would be very nice. Um, it cannot be a runtime tool. It's like sub modules is still fixed point in time, so it's it's reasonably safe. It's the same like the manual, essentially. 
But I do agree that it would be, it would be very nice if the submodules would work between SHA-256 and SHA-1, but they don't for now. Yeah. I mean, even with submodules, it would be... I, mean, I, I think this is worth exploring more as somebody who's not yeah. going to do the work. Um, but ultimately, when you update a submodule, it's with a commit as well. So even updating the submodule would still have that signature attached to it. So it would be safe, I think. Um, um, what do you mean? So when you update <clears throat> a submodule, it, it, you're, as you say, it's a point in time. Yes. And when you change the point in time that the submodule points to, say you want to do, you know, what is it, submodule update or something like that, and you pick a version, you have to commit that to the, the yes, yes. enclosing project. Yes. And, yes. Or the enclosing repository. And that commit would also require a signature. Nothing. That's done. That's already, yeah, that's fine. No, no, no that's, that's what I'm saying. That would be already part of it. Yes. So it should be safe. Yes, as yeah. long as we have the bigger hash for future proofing and all that stuff, then, yeah, it's fine. All right, thanks. Uh, if I got it correctly, uh, this will involve only uh, OBS, right? Um, my question is if there are plans or even talks to involve also the internal building services. Uh, this is IBS and OBS. This is like ALP or this framework one, but ALP is, is now in Git, right? It's kind of manu, manually put in there. There's no uh, anything, but if you go to source.suza.de, that's the internal instance of, of Gitty, and that has the uh, ALP sources in it. So when you commit, when you do a submit, when you did a submit request to the ALP source one thing, it goes to the OBS, then this OBS is synced to Gitty via a script, then this script is then, uh, not the script, this, this, this uh, Git repository, the project, is then used as a source for building the, the let's say, uh, SUSE Linux micro, right? Okay, but... So it's, it's, it's this long way around, it's already in Git, but it, you're just not doing the Git stuff part yet. Yeah, okay, this is, I mean, confined for what, regarding to the internal building system, only for the ALP stuff or yeah. whatever its name, right? Correct, it's, 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 it's in the, for the new framework, yes. Thank you. Uh, just a warning, uh, beware, some modules break. That's one thing that uh, probably it's not a good idea to overuse them. First, uh, the, Git some modules files needs to be the, the files need to be recursively checked so that they don't point anywhere you don't want to. And the second thing is that nothing prevents the repos to disappear or be replaced with something else, which means your project breaks in the future because it's not tied together. And the only way to fix that would be to add some uh, flattening feature to Git that will pull everything it depends on. It's, it's fine that the stuff breaks because we already have this in OBS. You have stuff that links broken and then the package is broken, right? Well, but imagine that if someone decided to actually store everything in Git, yes. then that will break. Uh, yes, which is but, why but, having but, a snapshot is a good idea right now. But this is not Git <laughs> somewhere in the world. This Git can only be in source.suza.de for intern for our products, or for OBS would be in the source.opensusa.org and not anywhere else. So the submodules cannot point randomly outside of it. That's okay. Space. Are you actually checking the this all the checked, levels? Yeah. Yes, all the levels. What all the errors? No, all this, the the submodules that are for the the packages are resolved only in this. Only in, this in the first domain. level. Only you don't do domain. recursive. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't keep going somewhere. No. So, so if I wanted to have a recursive repo, I can't. Like referencing itself. No. Uh, <laughs> so uh, nothing prevents you, in principle, from having a Git models file in the repo you pointed to and have Correct. another repo inside. But Correct. you're not resolving that. I guess we could check this. 
but it has to be like it will not resolve if it's pointing outside of the of the Getty instances. Okay, it would be a bad idea to not check that if if you are supporting this. And also, again, things do break. I will not trust anything to remain the same. So the snapshot is still a good idea until someone actually implements some uh, special feature to flatten everything. And let's say you have a main repo, and that repo contains objects for all the uh, submodules it references. Yeah, I would have to ask uh, Adrian how far the submodule was resolved. Is it just one level or recursively? But yeah. But, but, the, but the, this is just, uh, but like I said, it's, it's only pointing to, to stuff internal. So it should not be, it should not be, res I think it pro probably will not be resolving recursively. That's number one by default. And in either case, it would be just uh, uh, in, in our instances of, of the Giti. So it's not outside somewhere. So the culprit would be easy to find. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, uh, packages break in OBS. We have links that are deleted in factory, and then the devil project is just as broken, right? So this is not not a tragedy. It's just something we already live with. So submodules are basically links. I think it, it's 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 something down the line that. We should look at, but it's not immediately immediate concern. So no more questions, and I hope I generated a little bit of enthusiasm, and maybe we'll have a volunteer or two for the work group. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>